Hey there Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. This week we're talking about how to deal with rejection, whether that's as a writer trying to get published, a performer trying to get seen, or just as a creative who is out here trying to make it. I've been re-watching Suits. But before we go any further, please make sure you like this video and subscribe. Stuff like that really helps little baby channels like me get found. And while we're on the subject, why don't you follow me on social media? I am at Josie Alford Poet on all the things. And also, I just want to say a big thank you to my followers on Instagram and Twitter who helped me with uh, messages and their little tips and tricks on how to deal with rejection. It's worth saying that this video is all about publishing rejections. Uh, whether you're a prose writer or a poetry writer, I'll be focusing on getting individual pieces of work published in journals and magazines, so like individual poems, short stories, essays. Um, and then also this does apply to book publishing as well, so full collections, novels, or whatever that may be. There's also going to be a section on spoken word and performance and stuff like that, but I do think this is going to be relevant. The ideas translate into no matter what industry you're working in, so don't run away if you're not a poet, I promise. So, without any further ado, let's get into my advice on how to deal with rejection. So, before we go any further, I just want to talk a little bit about the types of rejections that you can get from publishers. And when I say publishers, I don't mean just mean people who are going to publish your book, but I also mean uh, magazine editors and that sort of thing. So, when I say publishers, I'm sort of talking about the umbrella generic term. Um, but I think it's important to have a think about what I what we mean when we say rejection um, and the different types that you can get. So in this context, I'm talking about you have sent your work to a competition, to a uh, magazine, a journal, an online blog for your work to be featured and someone has said no we are not going to be featuring it. Um, and so I just wanted to run through the different types of rejections because I do think there is, there are good rejections that you can get. So we're gonna run through those. This is something that they taught me about on doing my masters in creative writing. And it's something that has definitely stayed with me in the years since I've graduated, the good and not so good type of rejections. So there are, three, I think there are three top tier rejections. These are the rejections that you want to get, or at the very least, they're the rejections that you don't mind getting because they're actually very positive. Number one is a rejection with feedback. These are basically the unicorns of rejections, especially in the poetry industry. Normally, editors and publishers get overwhelmed by the amount of submissions that they get, and so it is very, very rare that someone will take the time to give you feedback on your work. So it's worth saying that if someone has taken time out of their day to give you feedback on your work, you should probably listen to it and also be grateful. It's super special and nice that someone has taken the time out of their day to do that for you. So yeah, be appreciative. But on the other hand, don't get offended if you don't get feedback. Some people get thousands of submissions in their inbox during a submission window. But like, okay, thousands is a lot, but also hundreds. Like, actually getting written feedback is super nice, okay? so. Don't be mad. So the next type of positive rejection is a rejection with an invite to resubmit. I've had a couple of these and they're actually really nice. So basically the idea is, is that they really appreciated your work, but maybe it doesn't fit in that edition or that round of publishing that they're doing. They're saying, hey, we couldn't fit it in this time, but please do come back to us or come back to us with different work. Um, or like, we like your style, your poems just didn't fit within the themes of what we're going for. That's a great one. That's a great rejection to get because, because it means that they are interested in your work. It just didn't work out this time. So during the next submission window or a few times after, you can resubmit, which is nice. Woo, they wanna see it again. And then sort of like, maybe not top tier, but the next tier down is the rejections that have been personalized in some way. They're not from a generic email. They're just someone who has written to you to say thank you to sub for submitting. 
It's sort of similar to getting tailored feedback, but maybe they haven't gone that far. But the fact that they've still taken the time to, usually it's over email now, but sort of rejects you with a personalized email is really nice. So definitely be grateful that they've taken the time to do that and recognize that that's actually a really nice thing for them to do. Then sort of next step down, we have the generic rejections. Now, I don't think this is a bad thing, especially like we said, some editors get hundreds of applications every submission window. So maybe um, just take it and move on. Like there's no sense in dwelling on it. They haven't, um, they're very busy people. It doesn't mean that they hate you. It doesn't mean that they don't value your work. It just means that they have had a lot of submissions. So they've had to write one email and send it out to a lot of people. So don't panic. Okay. And the final type of rejection, which I'm just going to say it here. The, I don't believe that there are any bad rejections. Rejections are just a part of it. And we kind of have to accept that. But in my opinion, the only type of bad rejection is no rejection. And so to be clear, when you submit to a lot of like, um, Competitions do this most frequently, but definitely um, publishers that have a lot of submissions might say, if you don't hear back from us by this date, we are not, like you were not successful. So it's sort of like saying, we'll, we'll contact the most successful people at this date. Um, and if you haven't heard back from us by then, then you're not successful. I'm not saying, um, I'm not including that in my rant, although, how difficult is it to send a generic rejection email? It's not so bad. What I mean is, is people who haven't specified that on the submission page, who have um, asked you all for submissions and then just not replied at all, um, or if they're on submittable, they've left it on received or pending. So with that in mind, I am publicly calling out Poetry Wales. I entered in November of 2018, their Christmas poetry competition, like the Seren Christmas poetry competition. And I submitted that on submittable on the 11th of November, 2018. And it still says received. Now, I don't know what the back end of submittable is like, but I also know it can't be too much more than a few clicks to just mark it as rejected. It surely cannot be that hard. And I think it's the people who just don't respond. So it clogs up our submission spreadsheet. We don't know whether there's a backlog. We don't know whether it might be um, accepted in the future. It's not on. So Poetry Wales either publish my poem about Christmas or reject it, stop leaving me on red poetry whales, rude. Okay, so my next tip on how to deal with rejection is remembering that it's all a numbers game. My first job out of uni, I got a job selling advertising in a local telephone directory. And the managing director who hired me kept telling me it's all a numbers game because I hated doing all these cold phone calls. I'd have to call every business in a certain area and ask them if they wanted to be pet to pay to be part of a telephone directory. There were two things I hated about this. One, I had to get over my anxiety of calling people pretty damn quickly. And two, he was absolutely right. The more people I called, the more sales I made. And the same applies to applying for publishers or opportunities or performances or whatever that may be. The more you apply for, eventually your numbers will start going up as well. A few of my followers, also had this theme in their advice. So Cat Lyons, also known as at Words and Weed, says, assume you'll get rejected 90% of the time. The 10% is what you're aiming for. Rejection is inevitable. It totally is. They're absolutely right. You know, numbers, you're going to be rejected more than you are accepted. And that is just the truth of it. So understanding that it's a numbers game, when you get rejected, you can just chalk that up to experience and move right on. So Lisa Lepresti says, as an unconfident poet, rejection is quite hard. You may genuinely not be the right fit, but you doubt yourself. Then the fantastic poet Sam J. Grudgings told me he sent off over 200 submissions and got 10 accepted. I decided to do a few every month. 
We all have voices worth hearing. Keep going, y'all. Being almost accepted is terrific enough. Lisa's absolutely right. The numbers on it, you've just got to keep trying. And I think sort of setting up a time to just regularly send poems out is really useful. She also mentions keeping good records. It just so happens that I've made a video on how to keep track of your submissions using a submission spreadsheet. I will make it pop up. So just have a watch of that video if you're wondering what I'm saying when I say a submission spreadsheet. So my publishing success for individual poems is about 20%, which is actually pretty high. But I'll be honest, I haven't been too hot on submitting lately. So I'm gonna get back on it, be sending a load more out, and I'll probably drive that statistic right down. It's also worth noting that my first poetry collection has been rejected five times in the last year. It's also worth noting that the transphobe who wrote Harry Potter got rejected 18 times before getting accepted by a publisher and therefore defined a generation. Anyway, my point is just keep going. Doesn't matter what your stats are, the fact is the more you put out there, the more you will get accepted. Finding the right home. It's important to find the right home for your work. Sometimes our work gets rejected because it, we didn't send it to a place where it would fit. And by that I mean sending a sonnet about your garden to a really experimental online poetry journal or submitting your spoken word piece to a traditional page establishment magazine. You've got to find the right place to send your stuff. So one way of doing that is um, subscribing to different magazines so you can get a feel about the sort of work they're looking for and send poems to the places where your work would fit in. I've actually made a video on where to submit your poems and I'll make that pop up here as well. At King Stammers on Twitter says, I remind myself that a lot of the selection process relates to how your work will fit into that specific publication or publisher at that specific time. It's rarely an indicator of your level of talent as a writer. He's absolutely right. It's just about that time and the place and you just need to make sure that you are putting your work where it is most likely to be accepted. My pal Beth at Poetry Machine, I've done a couple of videos with her before, has just added, and I think it's really useful here because she talks about other um, opportunities such as commissions and performances. So she says, for me, it's about feeling true to how I'm feeling at any particular time. If my confidence is low, I try to focus on areas where I know I have a USP and so a higher chance of positive results. For me, that's building relationships with collaborators for poetry machine projects and commissions, rather than submitting applications for open calls where I know I'll be up against thousands of amazing writers with similar or far better CVs. When I'm feeling more buoyed up, I take more risks funding applications, residencies, the occasional comp competition, etc. I think the cool thing about Beth's comment here is she's talking about different things, not just publishing. And you can see here how she does target her work to places where she knows she's gonna be successful. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take a punt on the things that are out of your wheelhouse. After all, how are we gonna learn and grow? But there's definitely something to be said about finding the right place for it. For example, if you're more of a spoken word poet, endlessly sending your poems to the more traditional things, like for example, the PN review, you aren't going, you're going to get a lot more rejection than if you focus on um, journals and magazines that are more open to stuff that we do. For example, Magma, cracking, check out Magma. But the same comes when it comes to collections as well. Certain Pub poetry publishers are going to be more at ease publishing traditional page poetry than they are spoken word. So two publishers that are well worth checking out in the UK are Burning Eye Books and Verve Poetry Press. I'll link to them down below. But yeah, um, have a look around. If you're watching from another country, I'm sorry that I don't have recommendations for you, but you can totally give it a goog and see what's about. I think it's all about balance. You've got to find the sort of places that are going to fit your work, but you also need to actually do it. To edit or not to edit, that is the question. 
So I just want to say thank you to Lewis on my YouTube community page who asked about how much you should edit a poem after you get a rejection and it turns out it's not quite that simple. Personally, I think as poets, we should constantly be looking at how we can improve our poems. There's that saying that a poem is never finished, only abandoned. So I think that process is a continual one. Okay, so the laptop I was just, uh, had all my notes on has just died. Luckily, I was able to upload it to my Google Drive, but I'm reading it off my phone now. Yeah, so I think that editing and revising should be separate from our submitting process, as a rejection is not necessarily a sign that your work is bad, and editing and revising should maybe be something that you've worked into your writing routine anyway. However, it is an opportunity to look at your work again, um, have a think about if you find there are any weak bits, and maybe sending it out for feedback from um, your poetry pals is a good shout. So Alex the Poet on Twitter says, I spend a little time moping around and feeling for sorry for myself, and then I start to refine. If there's any poems I'm a little less certain of, or segments of a specific poem, which aren't as strong as the surrounding material, I focus on that bit. Then he adds, one less successful sectional poem doesn't make you a bad writer but it could be enough to earn you a rejection over an acceptance. If I ever read over something and think, I could do that a bit better, chances are that whoever you submitted to thought the same. It's a really good point. I think having that in the back of your mind of could I be saying this better is definitely something that we should work into our everyday poetry practice anyway. To be fair though, just to be clear, I think when we're doing first drafts, that's not the point, that's not where we want that voice. But after the first draft, when we're in that drafting process, asking yourself, could I be saying this better? Or could this bit be done better than yes, of course. So that was awesome from Alex, but I also wanted to share my response from Sam Grudgings, who is at Story Giver Poet. He's actually been on my YouTube channel before. I'm pretty sure I taught him how to write a villanelle, um, but he writes, Grip my teeth and send a thank you for the response email and relook at the poem. See what other publishers it might be a better fit for. Often I'll overhaul it. Nine times out of ten I'll tweet self-deprecatingly about it to remind myself it's all part of the process and putting yourself out there is 90% of the battle. It's also worth comparing previous positive responses, if any, to see if they liked your last packet but not this one, to see if you can refine and recalibrate what they're after, or alternatively, I just act out this meme. <laughs> and the meme says, is my poem out of touch? No, it's the publishers whose validation and acceptance I sought who are wrong. To be fair, I think Sam has a point, or at least this meme does. I think there's definitely at some point got to be an element of confidence in your own work. It might just be that your rejection is there because it doesn't fit and that's it. It doesn't mean that your work is subpar by any means. And I think you can't take every rejection as a thing of, I've got to change my work. Uh, clearly the way I write isn't working. It's all about balance between acknowledging that you can improve and having confidence in your writing as you. You don't want to start writing like anyone else, so be yourself. But yeah, I think Sam makes a good point here. It's definitely an opportunity to do it. And if you do keep your good records of responses and stuff, you can compare different responses from different places and see if you can piece together if there's any recurring issues that you're getting. But Josie, what about spoken word? The theme of spoken word and performance came up a lot in my responses on social media. I think that's because that's the community that I am a part of. So I'm just gonna run through a little bit about how this applies to spoken word and performers. It's worth noting that as performers, we get other types of rejection too. As spoken word artists, we can often experience rejections from page pu publishers such as journals, and you can respond to that in three ways. One, you can look at how you're presenting your work on the page a little bit more. As someone who did an English literature degree, um, I definitely have a grounding in both page and stage poetry. So I have a really strong sense about how my poems look on the page and I 
take it quite seriously. But that's maybe something that people who write for performance don't necessarily think too much about. And if you are looking to get your poems published in magazines, then maybe it's time to start looking about how you present that on the page. Where are your line breaks? That sort of thing. You might also want to consider tailoring your pub your submissions to places that are known for publishing spoken word artists, such as Burning Eye Books or Verve, or there are a few journals out there who do as well. Then finally, there's an element of maybe you've just got to accept that your piece is met, is not suited to being on the page at all, and that there are other mediums for which your work is better showcased, like a video or something like that. King Stammers says on Twitter, also remember that you, if you specialise in spoken word slash performance poetry, it doesn't always translate well on the page. A great editor will help you a ton, but some work is suited for specific mediums. And Grudgings also adds, also for me, whilst rejections suck, as a performer, they are far from the be all and end all. There are poems that audience go wild for that just don't work on the page. So any rejection is cause for me to reflect and find different ways to present it. Film it, Instagram it, paint it, only say it once as a unique, never to be repeated performance piece. You get to decide your audience depending on the platform you utilise and it's very necessary to acknowledge that. It's your art baby, you should revel in who and how it is conveyed. I think this is a really good point. All of this video is talking about how we deal with rejection from the publishing industry and guess what? A lot of the most successful poets out there did so without the publishing industry. You know, they used social media platforms to share their poems, whether that's in video form, on Instagram, and whatever. So I don't think you need to set your store by who is publishing you um, in these journals. There probably no one reads it. <laughs> I'm not saying throw your poems out wherever, but I'm saying that you can really think about and curate how you want your poems to be seen and who they want to be seen by. My final point about spoken word um, artists and poets is that whether you're applying for commissions or performances or festival slots or whatever it is, rejection feels the same anyway. And I do think even though a lot of this video is tailored to um, written poetry, I think the vibes are still the same, especially these last two points. Feel your feelings. <laughs> I think a really important part of the process is allowing yourself to feel sad for a bit when you get rejections. Rejections still suck, pal. You're allowed to feel a bit sad about it, especially if it's somewhere that you were particularly idolizing or sort of like pinned your hopes on. It's tough allow yourself to be sad. So with that in mind, Dr. Lucy English, who taught on my masters said, I feel sad and angry for a day. Then I just get on with it and keep going. I think, I think allowing yourself to be sad for a day is totally fine. It's whether you've got reject, it doesn't matter what you got rejected from, just to take a moment, be a little sad and move on. It's all good. Also, it's important to let yourself feel sad, otherwise you might end up like Susanna Evans. He says, in a very repressed way, I immediately tell myself everything's fine and I'll go where I'm appreciated. And then two days later, I suddenly hate myself and have to work out why. <laughs> We do not support repressing in this house, um, but we do totally stand Susanna. I made a video reviewing her poetry collection, Near Future, um, and I'll link to that video below if you want to find out more about her. You should definitely follow her too. It's also worth noting that Susanna replied that tweet on the same day she got announced as winning one of the Northern Writers Prizes. So I think one of the things is, is it doesn't matter how successful you are, um, you're still going to experience that rejection and it's still okay to feel sad about it. My final tip is don't let it stop you. Just because you get rejected, it doesn't mean you shouldn't stop trying. Dawn, also known as at Dawn is losing the plot, says, see it as part of the game. 
You don't need to make a trophy wall of no, just celebrate the yes. I really like this point. Rejection is part of the game and there are some people who will recommend you like keep a list of all of your rejections as a motivator. I'm not going to go so far as to say that. If that's going to work with you then fine, but I do think celebrating the yeses are a really big deal as well. I also think maybe even celebrating the nice rejections are good, so when someone's taking the time to give you some feedback or they've asked you to resubmit, treat yourself to whatever that treat might be because that's still really nice. At the end of the day, rejection is inevitable and you've just got to take it as part of your stride and roll with it. It's all part of the journey, pals, so don't panic. I also want to add that if you've not been published anywhere, that doesn't make you any less of a poet or a writer, no matter what your mum says. I'm just going to finish with this comment from Undercover Poet, or at least just the first sentence of it. For me, it's all about reframing that word rejection, because it really isn't. A couple of years ago, I was so disappointed when my work didn't get a yes, but in time, I've learned that it's not actually Actually, it's not about receiving approval from anyone, and that includes competition judges or publishers. If you really believe in your work and are proud of putting everything into it creatively, mentally and emotionally, then that is more than enough. I think that's perfect. I think that just because it isn't a yes doesn't mean it's a rejection. Most of the time it just means a not right now. So. Yes, I think reframing the word rejection is really important. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much to my followers on Instagram and Twitter who submitted um, answers to my question, how do you deal with rejection? And I just want to ask you guys to comment below with your best or your worst rejection. Mine is, I've already mentioned it, but being left on read for three years by Poetry Wales. Let me know what your best or worst rejections are in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos about all things poetry and some things that aren't. If you want to say thank you using your money, you can always do that by signing up to be a Patreon or you can buy me a coffee. The links for both are in the description down below. If you can't support me with money, that's totally fine. If you want to so show your appreciation, please uh, like and comment and subscribe, share this video on social media, remember I am at Josie Alford Poet and if you follow me your comments might be featured in a future video. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you all next week, bye!